Uh, I'm Jason. I'm Jules. And we do we do filmographies. filmographies. You went fast. Oh shit! That's what happens, Jason? Tonight Great we're guy. talking about Dingaling Liss. Yeah, nineteen ninety thousand. It's two thousand one. It is, but apparently it was released in two thousand and four. Oh, that's true. It's only eighty one minutes. God bless it. Go kart films. It really is funny and touching, but in a way that will have most women asking their boyfriends questions about their masculinity, masculinity that they just don't want to answer. <laughs> yeah, a- the, ain't it cool news? The quotes on there are weird. The next one: Balzac's La Comédie Humaine. It ain't, but still charming in its own special, special way. The Austin Chronicle. That's such a backhand. The story is hilarious, inspired, even touching. A professional undertaking all the way. Filmmaker Magazine. Like, Obviously taking a dig <laughs> at the week that girl died. Yeah, I would hope so. We'll do the synopsis. This is an Onar Turkle film. Yeah, one of many. When Beef came out, you know Beef on Netflix? The new one right now? Yeah. He's doing that? No. Oh. But when Beef came out, it made me immediately think of Catfight, which apparently is an Onar Turkle film. It I is. I think that's Anne Hayes and the girl we like. What's her name? Oh, Sandra Oh. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm drunk. I can't remember. ding a ling Jack Peterson. Kirk Wilson has a problem that he won't be in very many movies after this. <laughs> We're told he's a successful birdhouse builder, attractive and very nice. He unfortunately also has no dingus. What with to get coonies wet? Cunnies. Cunnies. Here, hold on. He unfortunately also has no dingus. What with to get cunnies wet? Cunny. <laughs> His friend Alan, Robert Longstreet, has a lot of sex that at first is treated as incredibly whimsical, but later is very no bueno. When Jack finds out about a doctor that is offering the chance to have a real penis attached, and not some hackneyed arm or stomach penis, he jumps at the opportunity and even begins seeing his upstairs neighbor, Jenny, Lydia Toon Fruri, to lay the groundwork before he can officially lay the pipe. There's a lot of examination of the male libido and whatever, exactly one robo dick, and a generous offer that truly defines what it means to be a friend and to also have a dick. Now this I'm back. was filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina. Ah, where Matlock is filmed. <laughs> There is an estimated budget of $75,000. This is interesting, man, because I think this is a whole clique in North Carolina that we're making movies together over like mm. a five-year period. Like a daddy long legs kind of thing. Yeah, perhaps. That Turkle made quite a few fucking things. Mm-hmm. And apparently, you did you read the thing about how funding fell out for another movie, so we wrote this on the fly and made it? No. Did you see him in the movie? Yeah. 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 Uh, there's deleted scenes and extended scenes. Did you, no, oh, Robert, Robert Longstreet yeah. was an editor on this. He oh, good for him. It. He, he also does the commentary with Turkle. Oh, good. I didn't have quite enough time to listen to the commentary beyond yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah, I could care less. Oh, you didn't want to know more about Robert? No. I do. I know you do. He's, he's my, It's your job. He's my friend. Yep. He just doesn't know it yet. This movie is mm, interesting. I think it's kind of great. It's okay. It changes tone drastically towards the end. Yeah. That uh, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know. It turns out he's Yuri. Yeah, I'm like, what? The Russian spy. (laughs) Guy's got no way out. Did you like the story of his penis and how he was born with a penis? The fact is, I was born with a penis. A very considerable penis, actually. In fact, my cock was so large that one of the nurses in the delivery room thought it was my umbilical cord. Oh, shit. Well, I was confused because at first I thought he said he had like a sleeve of flesh. So I'm thinking it's like if you took like a, a Slim Jim shot all the beef out and you just had that intestinal casing. casing but then he said that it was so big that the nurse cut it off because she thought it was umbilical cord so i'm like so there's no penis she definitely committed suicide later in her life i think probably the living nurse? with that guilt wouldn't you think so no cut a baby's penis off she does that all the time <laughs> oh fuck it's yeah not a, it's not a but it's her thing it's not a mistake there's a whole crew of them out there Mm -hmm. she keeps them too oh man there was that child that was born with both of them both of what both a penis and a vagina yeah and i think they cut off the penis as like a baby and just raised them as a girl but the kid was all fucked up because you know that's not that happens quite often yeah they just go well i wanted a girl so i'll just you know but i think uh, eventually more people started being like you just have them both for now. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, right. You can decide later. You maybe keep them both. Stuff I mean, it in there later. Whatever. Stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. First off, 
they talk a tall game about bird feeders. <laughs> yeah, those bird houses are uh, terrible. Well, they're, they're whatever, but boy, they really don't spend that much time on bird feeders. No, they're barely in them at all. It's just to have it be a big dick gig. And I was a little disappointed by that. I thought we were going to spend some time. I was really quite astonished that this movie was so much of a comedy like a Kevin mm-hmm. Smith comedy. It's very much I'm glad a Kevin you said Smith that, comedy. Because it very much felt like that. So all the passengers are beating off, plummeting to their certain doom, when all of a sudden the hydraulics kick back in and the plane rights itself. And everyone puts their pieces or whatever, you know, away and deboard. Nobody mentions the phenomenon to anyone else. Well, did he come or what? It's right here in my notes. It says, Kevin Smith, funny, obscene, casual sex, and nasty dialogue. Come coffin muff stuffer. Yes, like that sort of very Baroque, on-the-head dialogue treated in a nonchalant way. I jam my tongue all the way down her shit slot. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, oh, boy. It's nasty. I loved it. But it feels like this exists within a world that's different from ours for a majority of the movie. Like how? Like when they're in the restaurant and he's like, oh, you can do this with your wiener. And all of a sudden the guy over there goes, yeah, you can masturbate in public. Yeah. And the lady goes, you can do the old tuck and pretend you're a girl. The tuck? That's when you tuck your dick between your legs, sweetie, so you don't look like you have a dick. I often was like, man, check out these people he put in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like what, they get $50 and then they got to deliver this dialogue as best they can. This 65-year-old woman's got to talk about cocks. It also feels like Robert Longstreet is doing no wrong. What do you mean? Like he's just in the vibe? He knows what to do? Well, he's telling these stories. He's in the pocket. And he's talking about getting farted in the mouth. Yeah. And it turns out to be the waitress. Yep. I farted in a guy's mouth once. I thought you looked familiar. Yeah, hey, sweetheart. Hi. Who has a boyfriend? Yep, she already established it. And she's like, but she's like, call me. Give me a call. Yeah. You know, and fucking fart in your mouth again, dude. When he's kissing the ladies, when he's at work. Then God, it, he's really talking about sticking that tongue way down her, her shithole. Her pooter, yeah. You say shithole? Her shithole. Shit slot. I think maybe shit that's where slot. shit slot yeah, came from. Yeah, that's exactly where it came from. Boy. Uh, so it, it feels like you can just say whatever. And people will say whatever, and there's no boundaries or lines that have to be drawn. But, like, the girl he's interested in is a totally regular person other than... Jenny? Yeah. Yeah. Other than their explosive romance. Or is it? I love right. you also. Oh, my God. Let's get married. But she takes off her bra and, and dangles it on his head. He feels like a simpleton. Yeah. Like a real Eugene type. I think he's really receded inside himself because he's missing that dick. Like, well, that's he's what he very says. Affable. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, if I thought that I w- was romantically interested in a young lady, in a hypothetical scenario where I'm not currently involved with a, a lady, and she seemed gleefully stupid, I probably would pump the brakes on that. Like, oh, you might be dumb, and I might be committing a crime. Well, I mean, she says he's the nicest man she's ever met in the world. You know, I would think that, man, he's got to have a hard life because he still has the testicles. You know what this feels like? This feels like a, a Mike Stoklasta kind of thing. Uh, Red Letter Media? Half in the bag. Yeah. What was that thing they did? The the couple, the Wyman's or something? Where he's married and, why don't you do the, the dishes? Oh, I'll punch you in the mouth. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it feels so, God, amateur and like edgy, but there is a poignant message rooted in all of this that on the nose but kind of is okay maybe i think it's a weird one but i mean but uh what do you what do you think if, if he has testicles and no penis big testicles he's still horny with no outlet you basically would have to be jamming that prostate real hard i really the wish they would have told us how he goes to the bathroom oh yeah you know is he does he just have a, a urethra but it's on his stomach no, because I mean, if his dick was cut off, yeah. there might be. There's probably like a nub, a stub. Yeah, even if there's, what would you do if, you, if, if there? Well, if it was completely up against the flesh, I guess you'd have to like sit down and yeah. put your hand over it to create like a cave to pee into the toilet. Because I don't know if you've experienced this. I assume this is what they call the blue balls. Uh huh. You're getting hot and heavy. Yeah. Your semen's building up. Yeah, but you ready don't. To go. But you don't consummate the marriage. No. And then you got like a gut ache afterwards. And your balls turn hard because they it's fall like, off. Oh, this blockage it means you got to 
two big Can ones. he ejaculate? Does he ejaculate? I think you'd have to smash that prostate, but also maybe you would think when he's sleeping, he'd be shooting loads. It seems like he doesn't do anything. No, he seems like he's completely turned off. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> Like later on in the movie, like he doesn't even understand how sex works. <laughs> yeah, or anything. No, we should. I guess we should go ahead and start at the top here. Uh, so yeah, he's picking twigs to make a bird feeder that we don't see yet. I build birdhouses for a living because, well, I'm good at it and I love it. He's talking to Robert Longstreet, who treats him perfectly normally, but goes on and on about his sexcapades. Which seems like it'd be kind of mean. Hey, no dick, let me tell you about all the fucking I'm doing. Maybe uh, maybe no dick likes to hear it because he has no concept. He says he kind of, kind of likes to live vicariously through his uh, uh, antics. I like to hear about him sticking his tongue down shit slots. And then eventually he goes, hey, there's a doctor that makes uh, real wieners. Transplants, like take the dick off of one person, put it on somebody else. Alan, no. I talked to specialists. They said that was impossible. Yeah. And he goes, no, I don't want a fucking arm wiener because apparently what they do is... We can give you an arm cock, we can give you a stomach cock, and we can do that by taking some fat out of the arm, some fat out of the stomach, and giving you a nice big cock, something you can enjoy, something you can work with. But that's not going to get hard. No. It just looks like a peener. Well, but what do you need a hard penis for? For the sex? No, you just... Put it in. <laughs> yeah, you stuff that softy in there? Yeah, you just lube to all hell. That's not just going in. It. I guess if you have mm-hmm. some tools to open that thing up wide, mm-hmm. and then you could stick that floppy sauce in there, Yeah, and then just pull the tool out, it'll clamp on it. Right. But it's just going to come out. Well, if she's queefing, yeah, but if no, I she can hold it together for a couple minutes. Push it out. Probably. So he goes, well, now this is the real deal. Dr. Harry Skinner, private plastic surgery. Private plastic surgery. Yeah, you know, plastic surgery for the private. What kind of surgery? Oh, yeah, genital elongation, penis removal. If someone's not happy with the length or girth of their cum cough and muff stuffer, they go to this guy, he'll fatten it up, he'll stretch it out, whatever. So he goes to see the guy, and he's a pretty eccentric feller. Yeah, he's got but more rat-a-tat-tat dialogue. He's good, actually. I like him. He's probably the best part of this movie for me and uh he goes well i want you to put a dick on me he goes now let me get this straight son you want two penises <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i don't have a dick i need a dick oh you got a vagina that's cool no 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 i had a wiener and, and i don't know i need a, i need a dick and he goes well shit all right i guess so you know is this difficult well you know this procedure is relatively straightforward you know but well no, check you up and It's not. It's not straightforward. Can you imagine all the blood vessels you'd have to line up, like, everything perfectly? Well, and not only that, but oftentimes donors, donor parts, don't take. Right, yeah. That easy. It's very (laughs) rare, actually, that, like, a guy had a hand put on and he became a murderer because it was (laughs) from a murderer's body. Is that that (laughs) private parts? Body bags, private parts. Some shit, man. Body parts? I think, like... What did they, they put like a, an ear on a guy's hand or a mm-hmm. nose on his hand to get like used to the body and get the blood flow going before they actually attached it to him? You ever see that mouse they put an ear on? Yeah. Oh. Shit's wow. You don't like that? <laughs> How about that, uh, fuck, what did they do? They switched dog heads or something? Oh, and the dog like lived for a little while, but it was uh-huh. terrible. They did that yeah. shit all the time. They're just like, I don't know. Yeah, they put a face on that monkey lady. The lady that the monkey ripped her face off of? Man, they fucked those people up so bad. Giving that monkey Xanax. That's why it went crazy. Really? Yeah, you're not supposed to give it. Normally it calmed him down, but mm-hmm. it also is like a psychotic for... You can't fuck around with chimps, man. You can't. They they rip genitals off of other chimps and smash them with it. Yeah, I mean, they immediately go for your soft parts. Your, they, your eyes, your nose, your genitals, your yeah. fingers. They Any, bitches. Anything that's like easy and of value and soft or the dangerous parts. They mm-hmm. take them out immediately. And they're like five men. I saw a chimp once punch into a man's... <laughs> Chest and remove his beating heart. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's crazy. Give you any indication? So okay. it's pretty whimsical. It's pretty irreverent. It's pretty you know highfalutin. He, he so he starts dating Jenny in, in anticipation of being able to have sex with her. But the doctor's like, well, shit, son, it's going to take you know ten, twenty years. You it's know. great too. Jenny's been like trying to get him to come up for a while. She's like, hey, you should come up and hang out. And he's like, no. No. He leaves. She goes, oh, I got a, a a recipe from New York. New York City? It's grilled cheese sandwiches, but it's n- non-grilled. They're just eating cheese on bread. Yeah. She goes, oh, I, I probably should have grilled these, huh? Oh, uh, I don't have any butter, though. And he's eating a banana. She goes, that, that actually is probably not very ripe. No, 
You don't have you don't have to eat it. No, I like it. You know. So they're just you know mundanely dating. He's giving her mixed signals because he doesn't have a wiener. She's like, hey, I thought you liked me. Oh, I, I do, I do. You know, can't tell you about my wiener though yet. And they are on the rocks, sort of here and there. And man, there are things he could do. You know, cunny. Yeah. You know, and strap ons. Mm-hmm. Turn, like, here's what you do. You turn off the lights. She starts fisting your asshole <laughs> until uh, 20 years worth of cum starts falling out of that hole he's got. Th- that. Or you turn off the lights and you have a hobo come in. <laughs> <laughs> no, Robert Longstreet. Even better. No. You know, and so. Uh, no, no. Yeah, it's me. Robert Longstreet calls Deep Throat, who brings him a CIA penis. That's fucking wild. Yeah. It's the cock jammer 2000 or something it turns out it's like a guy that they went to high school with right? oh is that what it is yeah. okay it's a it's a dildo but it feels like a real dick apparently and it, the explanation of it's pretty amazing dude. i mean it, yeah it makes sense right yeah you this... you will feel it you will come a prosthetic penis that actually feeds off the neurological impulses transmitted from the brain if you were wearing this contraption and were to visualize a lecherous image of some sort the smart cock 2000 actually interprets these thoughts of arousal and converts them into electrical waves the smart cock 2000 uses these waves as a power source then proceeds to function like an authentic human cock uh it also shoots it's uh, coconut loads bloated buttermilk or something you know but the thing that they that they're not at all harping on is the fact that a you have to wear underwear to have it on it's huge too and there's <laughs> wiring like, as well oh, that's huge to you jason you think that's <laughs> big interesting i didn't want to throw you under the bus <laughs> so he puts it on and he's at dinner with her and she's got cleavage for days yeah I said, I wasn't interested in this person at all up until I saw her cleavage, and now I like her. That's a honey trap. That's a, <laughs> yeah. She's like, you know, I wanted to make love to you. And he goes, I, I would like to do that. I have a robot BS. <laughs> and she goes, well, fuck. What about dessert? Fuck dessert. Let's get out of here. The fuck this place. They ordered coffee, even yep. though they're drinking wine. Mm-hmm. And as they're getting up to leave, the bar, uh, the waiter comes by with the coffee and spills it on his genitals. <laughs> So it's hard to tell if it's the burning sensation or if it's some sort of a me- mechanical malfunction or well, maybe a combination of the both. I think it's both because all that smoke starts spilling Smoking? out of his the penis. Smoking? The penis does smoke. Yep. And he pulls it out. And she's like- <laughs> It's a big fat hog. What is going on? And she leaves, but he's still having wardrobe malfunctions. And there's a guy earlier that called the waiter an FAG. I dine in here three times a week, you little fairy. Don't tell me to keep it down. Believe it, these fucking- f- Handle the food in this place. God, what an asshole. Oh man, double double FAGs in both these movies. Can you believe it? This waiter is a homosexual, you know, and are you do your Fred Thompson? Well, I believe he's a homosexual. Can you believe this guy's a homosexual? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't serving Bud Light. Eh, that's a topical. Dun, dun. And and is he, he dead? He's dead. I right? yes. Ding. I made sure of that. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> and he just starts coming all over that guy's face gallons of it just blah, 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 blah. there couldn't be that much in that dick you wouldn't think so why would there need to be t- do you do you think you have to refill that or it's, yeah yeah it doesn't just create it i mean it's a cia wonder tool there's no nuts if there were nuts i would venture to guess it creates it he has nuts though why can't it tap into he nuts why doesn't it have a bigger set of nuts that he can put his nuts into right and then he's riding it like a zord zord mm-hmm. from power rangers go, go, power Oh, the sword motorcycle? A no, sword? The, the, the Zords are their big machines that form into the bigger machine guy. It's like Voltron. You wouldn't understand. No. So the guy punches him in the face. He do. After Peter McDinker, Wiener, or whatever the guy's name is, pulls the Wiener out and throws it onto a lady's entree, punches him in the face. So he now goes home and he- It's like a $20 billion dick too, isn't it? Yeah, and he runs into a bum. Hey man, can you spare some change? Oh, this is fucked up. How about a 50? Oh, God bless you. He just starts tearing it up. He's gone to the dark side. Throws it on the ground. Yeah, because he's got a wiener now. And and then he runs into a... a, a, Sex worker. mm, Are we calling them sex workers? Lady of the night? A pro. Oh. And she goes, hey. Hey, handsome. You look like you had a hard night. Want to get warm? He goes, yeah, let's go back to my apartment. I'm going to make you a... cheese sandwich I'm on Blade now. Yep. you know and she goes 
money up front, and he's just got money for days. He just pulls it out, throws it at her. I don't think he spends it on anything. Go into the bedroom, get naked, and turn off the light. She goes, up. okay. She doesn't. She's still wearing her dress. Mm. Fucking pff, amateur. Were there no boobs in either of these movies? Uh-uh. I just had boobs on the brain. So he's just slamming. He's pouring glasses of fermented vodka, piss, oh. maybe, and slamming it. Uh, Do you make piss grapes? Wait a second. Have, do you have you ever done that where you put ten grapes in a jug and then fill it with piss? Yeah, of course. And then, okay, you put it behind the radiator, and then you have yourself a real pissy treat. So he's just getting shit faced, and now he's got his wiener out, and he's about to go in and administer wiener to pro. But but the dog that his friend <laughs> dropped off, <laughs> yeah, comes in and starts licking it because he accidentally spilled. Because he threw it into that lady's entree. I was really quite worried when his friend kept calling about that stupid dog. I thought that dog had died I in the backyard. I was really hoping that would be the case. Really? Yeah, that'd be an interesting development. I hate dogs. I'm not a dog person, but I'm surprised to hear that you <laughs> wanted to starve to death. Nah, I don't, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it has to happen. So she comes out like, what is happening? And the dog's licking his wiener. Oh, no, man. This is too fucked up. And she throws the money back at him and she leaves. She should have kept the money because he wasted her time. Absolutely. You think that pimp's going to be understanding? So he is now banging on, because Jenny's his neighbor. Maybe her pimp is a box cutter. Maybe. He's uh, banging, maybe he's a rapper to be. On Darla? Uh Uh-huh. He's banging away on Darla. (laughs) Jenny! Open the door, Jenny! He's got his wiener hanging out. Shut up, freak! Everybody's yelling at him. I'm not a freak! I'm not a freak! That's, uh, so now that's he's, pretty good. He says that with his arms out and yeah. his stupid giant dick underwear on. So there's a couple of things that happen, and I'm not sure what, uh, what order they happen in. One, is which, one, one of which is he's on his couch, and he's growing a beard. And he's got trash everywhere, and Jenny keeps calling him, and he calls her, answers the phone like, stop calling, I don't want to see you, and he hangs up. It's because his his uh, mechanical dick broke, he can't get dick surgery, nothing's working out for him. And then an- another thing that happens is, he- is he's having dinner with Robert Longstreet, and he's a real cunt. What's up, guys? Oh, nothing, just my dick. <laughs> Excuse me? See, I'm joking. I don't have a dick. You, on the other hand, you look like you couldn't get enough dick. In fact, I bet you had some dick last night, didn't you? Well, if that's the case, how about passing me some dick? Because I could sure use one right about now. I'm going to give you guys a few more minutes. Oh, yeah, Robert Longstreet's, like, wildly disturbed. He's on he's on quite the, like, dick pun. Is It's not even puns. He's real rat-a-tat-tat. Everything circles Everything back about to not having a dick. dick. Like, the guy's main, the main character's name is what? Jack Peterman? Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, I get it. Dick Trickler. Right. Dong Schlongage. And he's, you know, being graphically rude to a young kid and the waitress, Robert Longstreet's like, I'm going to get him out of here. That waitress is putting up with him pretty good for the shit he's saying to her. Yeah. She's, she's that tip. Because it's not a <laughs> not of his penis. Because mm-hmm. um, it's not the real world. I yeah. have some notes. Okay. Because we're, we're cruising through, like Tom, that doctor is is going through like the list of transplant successes Mm -hmm. and he's given first and last names he's just like violating hipaa left and right it's fucking crazy as a matter of fact there was this guy by the name of jimmy bowman bobo they used to call him real nice guy lived over at 44 chestnut street how about the explanation of his penis getting cut off and probably the best scene of the movie is when they cut the the lawyer in court (laughs) the lawyer court now my parents probably would have received a huge malpractice settlement but our lawyer was kind of a club i can't find it you mean Selman? yes i'm in contempt shit fuck shit and uh, the doctors that took care of him, they messed up on him. That's so good, dude. That lawyer is really uh, funny. Yeah, boy, I don't know. Mm. What are the deleted seeds is uh, his extended lawyer talk. Hmm. I like that shit. I got a real kick out of that. They also used to get dicks from quadriplegics. What? He said. When guys used to end up in a wheelchair, they would donate their penis because they, they would want it to live on. But then he said some shit like, Christopher Reeve gave them hope that they might walk again one day, so they stopped doing it. Oh, because of the stem cells? Even though he died. Oh, well, there was he was really was a, he a big proponent. No, he was a big proponent of the stem cells, though. Like, sure. He was marching toward... To, yeah, um, was remember when he's really excited to be towards. a participant in Circle Jerks, also? Finally, I'd be able to participate in fascinating penis rituals like the so-called Circle Jerk. Oh, this is great, boy. Oh, Where's boy. the nice Circle Jerk? Oh. 
My dad says we can have it at my house tomorrow. Whoa. Oh, God, yes. What the fuck is that? Who looks forward to that? And those- Not only that, but he found a flyer on his windshield. Right, and the guy is, <laughs> it's not like homoerotic at all. Is the old guy there the same guy that was the lawyer? No, I don't think okay. so. Okay. But the fact that these guys are straight up in a circle jacking off hardcore, yeah. talking about hosting it at their elbow house to the next day. It's one thing if you're in a elongated circle yeah, or an oval, but they are jacking to each other. My understanding is circle jerks is like something that happened maybe like 30 plus years ago and back further amongst like frustrated young men. Mm -hmm. And there was probably still a little bit of a gay vibe to it. Nowadays with full grown adults, Mm -hmm. there's no excuse for that other than like some dudes want to jack off together because it's hot. Yeah. You're some kid in the 40s or 50s. You know, you, you all you guys have your pants cuffed up and you come across a nudie mag in the woods and you instantaneously... You just start circle jerking. Ah! Uh, we'll never speak of this again, you know. Right. Why are you looking me in the eyes? <laughs> yeah. Look at the magazine. Look at the magazine. How come he keeps looking at me? <laughs> He's seeing me naked. I like that. Yeah. I think that from now on, my secret desire is to be watched while I masturbate. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a chair and put it in my bedroom. And that is where a friend will sit. Yes. Julian, you know what? We actually have a chair in our bedroom because <laughs> we had a chair. Is it that- in a dark corner? <laughs> so we have that couch up upstairs and there was a chair that matched it and we put it in the bedroom it's like oh this is like nice i like the idea of maybe reading this at some point it's at the foot of the bed right by my little bookshelf it occurred to me as i was watching something one day i was like oh shit we got a cuck chair (laughs) we got a fucking cuck chair in the bedroom it's usually filled with like toys like nerf guns and bathrobes but oh also they're talking about smegma (laughs) <laughs> yes L- long street's going on about that yeah i know that i've heard about smegma before unless you have a medical condition there is no excuse for smegma right no it's- you wash your penis every day yes he's saying every man after one or two days without bathing gets a weird viscous stenchy goo i've never had this in my life but was he saying on an uncircumcised penis? That would make more that sense. Would, I would believe, because, you know, that's just, that, those things are so gross. <laughs> oh, shit. Don't put them on blast. <laughs> I'm they, blasting them. I think they feel nice, I'm right? ass blasting them. I think there's actually feel a Feel nice. There's a big movement towards not circumcising your children, because you're getting rid of a large amount of, uh, I want to say neurons. What, what is it, the feelers in your peener? That's the bullshit. Sensation zone? That's No, it's bullshit. true. They look awful i think so i don't know some girl i worked with was talking about she's like they're nice then yes but again that would require you to not bathe every day Mm -hmm. i shower once a day always once Mm. in a great while something fucked up might happen where i don't bathe within a 24 hour period Mm -hmm. maybe once every year and a half two years Mm -hmm. And I get really greasy and smelly, so I have to shower all the time. Well, you know, you might not want me sitting on your couch. Oh, no. You're... I bathe every couple of days. Well, you're not gross like me. And I'm active. I'm an active feller. I'm fat. I like meat. That's all I got. I also don't wipe my butt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no wipe November's coming you know, up pretty I work, soon. I work with a guy. He's a uh, Muslim. He, he they, they wash their genitals after going to the bathroom. I'm like, what do you do? You carry like a little cup or something? How do you get the water? They they squat into the toilet and stick uh-huh. their 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 stuff in there and splishy splashy. So you know he is becoming a jerk now that he has a penis. He doesn't have it yet. A fake penis. A fake penis is is enough to make him a jerk. I don't think he's really using it. I think he's just furious. Is he? Wasn't the I fake feel like penis the fake, on a rotation? I feel like the fake penis gave him sensations that altered him in a bad way. Yeah. Because it's a penis sensation. Because yeah. penises are bad. Ah, you unla- unleashed the horny. So, Rob, you know, he yells at Robert Longstreet. Robert Longstreet's like, dude, you're a cool dude, brah. And he goes, fuck you, man. And he walks away. And then a lady comes up like, hey, are you the bartender? And he goes, yeah. And then she walks away. Nothing happens. So then uh, the doctor calls like, hey, he's about to tell Jenny that he's got no wang. He gets a call on the other line. So he says, hey, hold on one one second. You remember telephones like that? Call waiting, they call it. They did. And so he answers and he goes, hey, it's the doctor. Brr, I got you a wiener. What? Yeah, big time. It's going to happen like Wednesday. Oh, okay. 
And then she's banging on the door. How dare you leave me on hold? What the hell? And he goes, I love you. I want to marry you. He she goes, that. oh, that's what you wanted to tell me. Oh, okay, cool. I'm, I'm about that. Yeah, she, doesn't she say I love you too? It's, it's crazy town. Maybe. It's not good. So, you know, he's now like, well, we can't have sex just yet, though. Hold on. And then he goes to meet the doctor. And the doctor's like, yeah, the donor's in the next room. He wants to meet you or whatever. <laughs> Step into this endless white Wait, void. Did you see what was coming a mile away? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like, I said to Callie, I go, well, I know what's going to happen. I said, I, I mean, nobody would watch this with me. I was watching in the dark upstairs with, because the Xbox is the only DVD player I have. I actually upstairs. played it on my three. I bought a 360. Oh, you told me about that. I did. Now, Callie was building two wheels at the time, so she wasn't actually much paying attention. I don't think you need to pay attention. You just listen to that rat-a-tat-tat. Yeah, the and she'd make comments, and I was like, shut up. It's a screwball 1940s comedy I'm now. I'm watching this for a podcast. This is really important. Our this listeners- is my job now. I quit my professional job. We both quit our jobs. We got to make this work. Our girlfriends are supporting us. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't up the amount of episodes we're doing. <laughs> Nothing. Same no. amount. Same amount of energy. And, and, and so he goes into the room and it's, it's Robert Longstreet. And he goes, well, this isn't very funny, Alan. He goes, no, dude, you don't understand. This isn't a joke. Come on, sit down. I'll explain. There's a lot you don't know about me. I was dating a girl a while ago. I didn't tell you this. And she didn't want to have sex with me. So I pretended to love her. And I effectively kind of proposed to her a little bit. It took months, but I knocked down those walls. And, we were, and she finally gave in. And he's having sex with her. And you can tell she's not into it. Right. Oh, you like this dick, don't you? It's like real ugly and gross. And she's like, Ugh. yeah, but they are dating. And uh, then he's like, mm, this was fun, but I'm not really. He sneaks out in the middle of the night. Yeah. And, she, and she's super confused. Like, what she are you catches wh- him? Where are you going? Like, she's not even like, she believes it enough that she's not even assuming that he's like leaving. Here, let's, let's act it out. I'm, I'm Robert Longstreet. Mm-hmm. I'm leaving. You're going to confront me. Yeah. Ask me where I'm going. What, Ro- Robert, where are you going? Fucking Taco Bell. Do you want something? <laughs> okay. I, I would like a fourth meal. Yeah, get it for you. I would like a Dorito ta- I never had a Dorito taco. Go lay in the bed. I'll get you all the Dorito taco flavors. Mm-hmm. You're going to have so much communal diarrhea. <laughs> all, that, all that protein's going to fuck you up. So he goes, This bitch. is what our listeners really want to hear about. Yeah. Fourth meals and Dorito taco shells. And he says, Bitch. I don't love you. I'm leaving. I fucking lied. So she's she's super cute, by the way. She reminds me of Liv Morgan. Who? She's a professional wrestler. Oh. And he's so he's just and of course, like this is his neighbor. We didn't mention that. Yeah. He even says earlier, Oh, don't have sex with your neighbor. Chickens come home to roost. So he's bringing home sluts. Fuck, that lady's cute. And he That's me. Fall mean. down drunk. That's I why you got called slut? I'm just That's the nice lady you know from the saying. bar. Susie Esmond type. And she had fun hair. She's banging on the door. He answers the door like Oh my god, you are so fucking pathetic. What is what 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 is wrong with you? Get over it. Get and out the, of here. And the the slut comes out like, What's wrong? Get back in the bed. He's a real Jim Gaffigan type. At this he's, point, he's really mean to this lady, like treating her like she's everybody a disgusting monster. Mm-hmm. How dare you come down here? Yeah, how dare you? I know we were in love and engaged a week ago. That was lies. I want to throw up on you right now. Mm-hmm. You're not a real woman. So he leaves, he moves, and all of a sudden the police come by. Have you seen this boy? And he goes, the, what's is that? Is that Edward Furlong? <laughs> Eddie Fur? Uh, yeah, I, I seen him in the Crow Wicked Prayer. He did. And David Borean has cut his heart out. Need the devil. And so he, he goes, yeah, that's whatever her name is. I forget now. Why are you asking? Oh, we're not probably supposed to say this, but she killed herself. Yeah, big time. And she'll have to know your name. Written in blood. But, feces. It, but it was vaginal blood. Written feces. Highly enough, even though she cut her wrist. So he goes, fuck. And then he starts having dreams of all the ladies that he's been with. What is a sliver? And they're just, you're a dirty Wait. man, you're a piece of meat, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking of flatliners, but yes. E- exactly. I- I'm glad you mentioned that for no particular reason, though. So, y- you know, he, he starts vomiting <laughs> and uh, he determines that, you know, he shouldn't have a dick. He had a dick earlier and was also going to be a professional baseball player, 
but he used the dick too much the night before tryouts and he couldn't do it. So he's like, I'm going to give you my dick. He goes, well, I don't want your... Oh, his dad, Jack Wackerman, his dad earlier, is like, well, it's probably... The dick you're getting is probably going to be from a homosexual. It's obvious. This man, whoever he is, is having his dick cut off because he's gay and wants to be female instead. It's going to make you a homosexual. You're going to be gay now. You're going to be putting it in men. You know, you say men think with their penises. The, you're going to be putting it in men. Men are going to be putting it in you. Yep. You guys are going to be rubbing them together. And then he has a, you're going to be shooting loads back and forth through your holes. He has a vision where he's in a l- shower. Yeah. In a gym, and two guys are. I've seen that dick before. I'd never forget that dick. <laughs> I was thinking about those guys, like, probably not professional actors. No. It's like, hey man, we'll give you 50 bucks to pretend you're gay. <laughs> One looked like Theo Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. And he go, I know that dick. Yeah, man, I recognize that thing anywhere. I've had that in my hand, you know. <laughs> and, and, but the wife, the mom goes, you're just jealous because his penis is going to be bigger than your hour shape, hourglass shaped penis. Yep. He pulls out a book. That's, How to cope with your hour shaped glass penis. I think that's later. Yeah. Okay. But it's Alan's penis. And he goes, okay. And he takes it. And then he tells Jenny, she's, oh, earlier also, he's actually finally fucking building a birdhouse. Yeah. For a gay man <laughs> yeah, who is just fawning and pawing at his nips. Trying so hard to fuck him, and it doesn't register in this guy at all. No. Because he doesn't know what sex is, doesn't know what penises do. It's incredibly uncomfortable how <laughs> how his many hand, liberties he's taking his, with his hands are body. all over him. Because he's basically saying, like, I'm, you know, I got a married man inside, but we're trying to, you know spice it up yeah move the toy sit in the chair you know he's gonna go behind i'm gonna go in the front i bet you something happens down there well actually what we're gonna do is a human centipede oh that's not <laughs> that's not as good i was hoping he, he, he could cub, even if it's maybe not his first choice no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you get a mouthful of shit eat it i had strawberries for lunch and and so he is married now he's plowing her and he's building birdhouses and Robert Longstreet is a professional baseball player. Yep. And it's he looks the, right at the camera and says, I love you, Jack. I love you, Jack. I love you. And they're all like, yay. Oh, Jack, you changed my life. Mm-hmm. I don't, that dick was poison. Mm-hmm. I ain't got a dick now. But to you, it's the power of tomorrow. It's the power of Christ that <laughs> compels him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. That's such a weird monologue to the screen. Not uh, really a monologue so much as a... Yeah. It's weird. And then the movie's over, man. Yeah. We we didn't talk about Onar Turkle, the writer-director sucking that dick uh, popsicle he next is. to him. It's, you know... You can kind of tell it's the director. The way he's, like, he looks so pleased. Um, I No, I, I couldn't. I refute that claim. It just seemed like a guy who was like, I'm giving ahead to this popsicle, I guess. <laughs> Wasn't he, though, the other guy was eating a corn dog that was, like, chewed funny to look like a dick? Kind of, and then and he ate it. And Turkle's, like, popsicle is straight up from a dick mold. <laughs> uh, so, I I liked this movie. It was fine. It's not great. The lead, I felt like maybe somebody a little bit better could have done the lead and it would have been better. Yeah. He's fine. He's okay. I felt like they could have elevated it. It very much reminded me of, like, Clark, so... When they were talking to each other on the playground, remember, and then they went down the slide and they laid in the slide, that felt like the kernel of a Adult Swim sketch that was then going to become something else, which, of course, it didn't. Uh, you know, this movie, <clears throat> it's very blunt, and I don't really know what it's saying or if it has anything really to say, but it was simultaneously less than and also more than what I expected. I assumed it would be just terrible. I was not looking forward to it at all. I had no idea it was going to be an obscene I wasn't comedy. looking forward to either of the two movies we discussed tonight, but this one in particular, I'm looking at the DVD and I'm like, I don't know, this looks... Terrible? Par for the course for the time, but not great. And I'm reading like the back, I'm like, these blurbs are not very flattering. Yeah. And oh, God, Callie's going to question my fucking masculinity now. God... Damn it. The early Kevin Smith shit really turned me off. I stomached it. In this movie, or you don't like Kevin Smith? This movie. And what else you said. But 
you kind of get past that a little bit. Um, and then it gets pretty dark, but then it gets a little philosophical. And then it gets a little over, so I guess, I don't know. What are your ratings on this thing? Man. I'm grappling with this. I mean, I honestly, I give it like a, a good six. Okay. It's not perfect. I would almost give it a six. Po- I don't know a six. A six is good. I really, I got a, I'm a Kevin Smith guy. I really liked Kevin Smith when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. Like, I discovered Clerks. Well, I was staying with my college-age sister in Hibbing, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. We rented Clerks when I was probably like 12 or something like that. And then I got mall rats at some point. My mom brought me to see Chasing Amy in the theater. I was very much a Kevin Smith boy. So to come across this thing and to discover it's uh, very much in the same vein with the rat a tat tat crude dialogue, yeah, I was, I was delighted. It feels like a lost Smith for sure. I'm going to give it a five. Okay. You're going to rank it the same as the week that girl died? I gave that a four. Okay. We both gave it a... Jesus Christ. I, you know what? That was a week ago. <laughs> exactly. It's fine. I think... I like the set production. I like I liked Robert Longstreet. I liked, I really like the doctor. I like Jenny, too. She seemed as close to a character as you could expect, maybe, from a movie of this era and time. Mm-hmm. You know? Did you know the the guy who got jizzed on in the restaurant? That's one of the producers of the film. The guy they hired to be the actor, Blake, was like, "Sure, that sounds great." And then he found out he's supposed to get come on, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I'm not doing the shit." Right? What is this a Bukaki film? Yeah, I ain't doing it. Get your cocoa butter out of here. I ain't no goo girl. <laughs> and then that guy was just like, "Yeah, that's fine." I don't care. Yeah, I. What, what do you give Longstreet? Twelve. That's what you're giving him. No, I, that's what you're giving him. He gets pretty. I really like that white void shit when he's talking in there. That's fucking crazy. I mean, the, oh God, the story is highfalutin, but something about this guy is genuine and vulnerable. I mean, he's he's definitely, he doesn't want to be famous. He wants to be a good actor. Mm-hmm. This is a guy that even when he's not getting any parts, I feel like he's advancing in his craft. It's like early Buscemi. Oh. You know, like he isn't there to fucking become the next thomas mapath of the fourth yep right he's there to do the fucking work who's that are you thinking of william mapather that guy too who's thomas mapather the fourth i don't know is that tom's name cruise boy yes cruise control it's just the materials of its time it's fine i'll give him a seven it's pretty slight it's slight material i'd give him a seven too i liked him Mm -hmm. i think there's the last two movies we've seen a peek into an interesting actor it's curious how similar he is in both movies yeah kind of feels like the same guy i mean think about him doing the sad ass monologues and mike flanagan shit 20 years later i shot a mixed girl and she's paralyzed <laughs> that yeah the, the, the well the haunting of hill house where he talks about his baby dying and then oh, is hearing, he the, he's the ground cries yeah yeah is that hill house i thought that was Blythe. no it's the hill house is the good one. Oh yeah with yeah. the little kids. The one that's really about trauma. Not good. I don't think it's awful, but it's not... I mean, the other one's no, really about... No, you said it was awful before we did this show. It's not It's not on par with the other It's terrible. I really don't think it's terrible. Actually, it's just not great. It's complete garbage. It's quite sad. Did you watch the whole thing? I did, unfortunately. I didn't, but I read about the last episode. It's <laughs> it was quite sad. stupid. I really hated a lot of it. I felt Actually. like The Haunting of Hill House was like great for nine episodes, and then like that last one, you're like, what? Yeah, if you would have cut that down a little bit, five, six. I mean, everybody, of course, I don't know if they were or not, but I'm sure everybody was raving about the funeral home single shot. Yeah, people did like that. I'm sure they just wet themselves over that. I don't know. I really felt like it was a very sad, amazing family drama that happened to have this ghost shit going on. The ending was a little bit convoluted. I think this is why Flanagan fucking rocks Mm -hmm. is because he can key into characters and get good actors. He has like a good story and he's like, now let's make it spooky. You know, it's funny because you had said, oh, they put ghosts in there. And I didn't notice any ghosts in the first one. But then when I was watching Blythe Manor, I was like, oh, there's a ghost. Oh, there's a ghost. Hey, Callie, there's a ghost. She's like, what? I'm not saying. There's a ghost right fucking there. It's reading the script in the reflection of the window. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, uh, the divine secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. Finally, is he a dad in there? No, he's the pilot. Um, 
When I hear the divine secrets of the Yaya sisterhood, it makes me think of the sisterhood of the traveling pants. Exactly. Which we all know and love. But I think the divine secret, secrets of the Yaya sisterhood are uh, middle-aged women. Like It's Ashley, a flashback movie, right? Ashley Judd? They're young, old, and then they think about when they were young. I think so. Is it like now and then? Is it now and then? I'm thinking it's uh, more of a sleeper kind of a... Sleepers? Yeah. They got uh, raped at the prison? Yeah, and they... I think they kill somebody with a hot dog cart. Oh my god, please tell me Kevin Bacon is sleezing his way through all the scenes. Yeah. Great. He plays one of the sisters. It's an interesting choice. Interesting. Very kids in the holly. Mm-hmm. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, and... The Street Corner. Wow, what is the other thing? Instagram, YouTube, Reddit. Facebook. Facebook. The Book of the Face. Mm-hmm. And Gmail. We doing filmographies. At gmail.com. Twitter. What what do you what do you do on Twitter? You do, you do filmography. Oh, is what you do. Very good. There's a phone number that 763-637-1894. Fuck, I think that's really close this time. I give you five dollars. <laughs> 763-634-1897. That's you what say, I fucking said. Did you say one eight nine four? I think I said seven. Okay. I think I said seven. Good for you. I will never remember that again if that was true. I won't either. Can you rate, review, subscribe the show? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You you do you like us? Donate a bunch of the clothes that you're no longer wearing to um, a local thrift store. Ooh, a, this is a call to action. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to do call to actions to engage with our audience. Mm-hmm. Give your clothes away. Mm-hmm. Go and your, take your parents' clothes. Take your clothes. Your you partner's wearing clothes, clothes right now? Take them off. You each get one outfit. Yes. You fucking, you go find people that look like they need clothes. Yep. And you throw it at them. Yeah. You say, clothes. You, you put these, put these on right now. And don't take no for an answer. Don't go fuck if it's summer or what? You fucking layer up. Don't tell them we told you to do it. No. That's not, the key. This is all about you. Just do it and claim ownership. Uh, you can suggest to them that they listen to We Do in Filmography. That you should do, right. Available on all podcast you platforms. Know, just, just you know, for no particular reason, you should listen to this podcast. You should. Not this episode, right, because then they'll hear that we gave them the idea. Maybe hide that one. So start with Yaya Sisterhood. And go down that long street. Right, right. Also, check out the Projection Booth podcast. Welcome to the Projection Booth. I'm your host, Mike White. It's just another podcast I like. They should get that. Also, five films from. Listen to that, too. Mm-hmm. They do five films from a director. Five films from. With Mac Kennedy and Todd Edmondson. And also, listen good. to the Digital Foundry Weekly Direct. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Digital Foundry. Absolutely. Show. And uh, then go to the, the NowPlayingNetwork.net. Mm-hmm.